Dear ATEL members, my colleague and I are really pleased to be part of the ATEL Fall Conference today. And when we prepared our presentation, we didn't want to be redundant with what you've heard during the annual conference. So we really want to provide you with insights and pragmatic content about the future of liquidity management solution. So you will have takeaways to feed your own reflection on innovative topics and eventually make up your mind on what suits you best. First, please let me introduce myself a very few words. I'm currently heading the value engineering activity for Southern Europe in Kariba. The objective of a value engineering team are first to propose in-depth analysis on your current situation, providing with full studies to help corporate treasurers and CFOs to build comprehensive business case related to the liquidity management transformation. It can be on qualitative and quantitative benefits you can expect from the digital transformation. This is much appreciated approach from our clients and prospective customers. It provides with a good starting point for the transformation decision and journey. Second objective is to give you, our customers the visibility we have as a software provider on technologies, best practices and in particular on the innovation benefits. This usually means not only adopting a new software or switching to a new technology, but it requires also changes in the operational activities, organization, and last but not least, corporate culture. And of course, it should also include a new business vision aligned with a new IT vision. Today, we will speak about artificial intelligence, AI, and I'm sorry if I will reuse some public information that Jan Dirk van Beskom from BNSP Paribas already mentioned during his great presentation last month. We will focus on pragmatic usage that could be available in the coming month if it is not already the case, for example with Kariba. I will let my colleague Camille explain in details what we've achieved already. So let's start with some insights on where corporate treasurers stand currently as far as digital transformation and innovation are concerned. The question would be as finance professionals if you should make the big leap. When we look at your readiness regarding systems, nearly one-third of treasury departments plan to upgrade or change their TMS, and more than that for ERP. It can be considered as high ratio because it is usually around 5 to 10 percent of intention to displace their current systems. It can also be the difference between the wish to change versus the act to change at the end of the day. We think at Carib that it is important to explain which benefits you can expect from such a transformation project and what are the benefits innovations can bring illustrated by real figures. When we look at the appetite for new technologies, AI is a major game changer. Among the multiple usage of AI, two of them are of major importance. The first one is the help it can bring to the supply chain, and second is to improve the working capital requirement forecast. On the latter, we will be happy to share you today what kind of performance you can achieve thanks to artificial intelligence. According to the 2020 EA City survey, more than 55% of treasury departments are focusing on cash flow, which is not surprising actually. And you can see that on the second position, you focus on review, replacement or your, on your existing solution. We assume it is to meet the above requirement at least regarding the cash flow forecast and also working capital management, which stands at rank number three. If we look at the next priority, we can find again the well-known innovative topics. Honestly, we do not know exactly how AI will help at this stage. They are just buzzwords. So we can wonder if you are ready for the big leap, what could be the information or good news that will change your mind? To give you a brief overview of what kind of technology we will face within a short time, I have a good news and a bad news. The good news is that AI is the next one on the list. Indeed, data analytics is now a commodity with modern TMS. RPA is just like a band-aid on a wooden leg for treasury teams, and API are just a mean 
to make real-time liquidity live. With AI, rules are changing. Until now, when you need to process tons of transactions and data, you had to make tremendous effort in order to cover maybe 80% of the amount, the impact, due maybe to 20% of causes. But now the rules are changing. AI will allow you to target higher objectives, such as 99%, with a minimum effort. Achieving this result will not be a question of money, but a question on how you will teach the computer to do the job for you. The bad news is that the computer will no longer answer yes or no, because you will have taught it that real world is not binary actually, and hopefully as a computer it will not be disappointed. But it might give you some usual, unusual answers, such as maybe instead of true or false or zero or one. Therefore, you will provide more and more data to increase its knowledge with more and more algorithm to train decision making. So it will progressively provide new answers maybe, such as maybe no or maybe yes, or depending on another factor that could influence its answer. This can become scary, I agree, because it might answer I don't know, and then we all might become as Dave. I'm sorry, Francois. I'm afraid I can't do that. Let's get back down to Earth. All of these is to show you that AI, with AI, sorry, you will be in charge of training your software, either with the data you provide to it to increase its knowledge, or with the way you are solving issues as a human to teach it and to improve its skills. The different domains where AI can provide significant results are well described in a US bank article. In a nutshell, first, the efficiency on day-to-day -day operations. For instance, on cash reconciliation, that could be a pain for the teams in order to reconcile forecasts and actuals. When a human resolves the pending reconciliation, the AI engine will learn and will propose or decide by himself the next time it will face the same pending operations. In these situations, ratios can reach as high as 99% of matching transactions, reducing drastically the remaining effort for humans. Secondly, considering decisions based on data. We will give you very insightful example that Kariba is working on from several months now. So I will let my colleague Camille focus on those examples. And eventually, controls processed by AI are more automated, more relevant, on the, that can be performed on the whole set of transactions or data, since everything is fully automated 24 hours a day. According to the type of review you would like to have on suspicious results, you may adjust some parameters to fine-tune the way AI engine is processing the data. As an example, some SWIFT messages are controlled within banks in order to validate if they are compliant. However, adopting these types of technologies will not get out of the hat in the, or in the early morning when you look in the mirror. I, I selected it here two key elements that will be sources of inspiration to prepare your transformation journey. First is the field analysis from operational teams that will help to reveal pains regarding day-to-day -day activities. Second, we have the chance to be able to rely on new generations, X, M or Z, that will pull forward this type of transformation of initiatives not only to free up their time and play video games, but just because it is part of their DNA. To be surrounded by AI engines, Instagram, TikTok, Uber, Facebook, etc. So, I will let now my colleague Camille that will walk through some real use cases already validated with our customers, and I will be pleased to come back for the Q&A sessions. Camille, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Cyril. So indeed, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning are powerful technologies um, that really applies in Caribbean's uh, context. And uh, today I would like to share with you 
two concrete examples where machine learning brought value to our customers. Before we start, I would like to take a few seconds just to uh, come back on the definition of artificial intelligence and machine learning. So machine learning is a subpart of artificial, artificial intelligence. It's a um, set of algorithms um, where um, the algorithm learn from data and they are able to make production of new data based on what, uh, what they, they have learned. So machine learning is a two-step uh, process. The first step is the learning. Um, so we have, uh, there is two components. Uh, first, the historical data on which we learn for, and second, the machine learning model. So uh, the machine learning model is um, selected um, and tuned by a data scientist and all the features that are accepted uh, as a, in entry of the machine learning model are defined and tested um, with the data scientist. And what happens is that we take the historical data, create all the features needed by the machine learning model, train the machine learning model on all the historical data, and as a result, we have a machine learning model that has been trained. And in curry bass context, uh, it has been trained on the data of a single customer. The second step that occurs in real time is the prediction. So as soon as there is a new data, the new data is submitted to the trained machine learning model. And as a result, we have a prediction that is uh, shared um, in curry bass context uh, to the end user through the application and you can use this prediction to take uh, action based on it. So now that I uh, take a, a few seconds to, to the definition, let's deep dive into the two uh, concrete use cases. The first use case is the forecasting of, of cash flow entry based on the past invoices. So, um, in discussing with our customer, we realize that uh, often uh, they complain um, that they don't know when their customers are going to pay their invoices. Uh, so it's uh, really difficult to manage uh, account receivable and predict it. So we did this pilot uh, project with two um, corporates to be able to better predict uh, the, the cash entry um, based on the, the, their past uh, invoices. So the first step was I discuss um, the selection uh, and the tuning of the machine learning model, the building on the all the features to define an invoice, and um, then we use uh, we train the machine learning model uh, on all the historical uh, all the past invoices. And in on a daily life, then when there is a new invoice, the new invoice is submitted to the machine learning model and a prediction is made uh, on the forecasted uh, collection date for this invoice. And this information is combined with the amount of the invoice. And as a result, we have a cash flow. And if we aggregate all those uh, cash flows, we're able to have an accurate uh, cash position for the next weeks and months uh, for our customer. So as a result of uh, this uh, pilot project, we are able to drastically reduce the error between the forecasted payment date, the invoice, and the actual payment date of this invoice. So before um, our pilot customer were around 25 days of error, and now with this machine learning model, it's now around five days. Uh, so it's 80% uh, improvement. Uh, which is uh, really meaningful for them. So that's why we decided to move to the next step. And uh, the current status for the project is right now, it is in development uh, to become a product that will soon be available to our customer base. For the second use case, uh, we focus, um, we picked a, a use case to uh, leverage our fraud detection uh, product that is used today by our, our, our clients. Um, they have a rule-based engine uh, to detect uh, fraud patterns and they, they wanted to, to go beyond 
um, and be able to detect new fault patterns. So that's why we um, decided to look around uh, what machine learning can offer for this, uh, for this problem. And uh, we did a pilot project with two customers also. And the goal was to identify the least normal payments in their payment history, uh, thanks to machine learning. So the first step, uh, as before, uh, as we mentioned it, uh, is the selection of the machine learning model. Um, then we tune uh, this model together with uh, the customers and the data scientists. And, um, based on, and we train it on all the history, for all the payment history of a customer and all the characteristics of a payment. As an output of the training, what we get is um, um, uh, all the payments are ranked from the least normal payment to the most normal payment. Then uh, we shared the least normal payment um, below the threshold uh, to the pilot customer so they can confirm if the um, payment that has been identified as anomaly are actual anomalies. On a daily life, how does it work? Um, when there is a new payment that uh, gets uh, into the Cariba application, uh, those payments are submitted to the machine learning model and a prediction is made. So let's say I have a first payment um, it's an electricity bill that I pay every month uh, for the building and rent renting. So in this case, it's um, regular common uh, payments. So the normality rank is very high, no alerts for the payment one. And let's say I have a second payment uh, made over uh, the weekend by a user that does not usually do payments or manual payments and it's to a country where the business is very limited to a new vendor. So in this case, the combination of characteristics for this payment is um, very abnormal. So the normality rank is very low below the threshold. And in this case, an alert is um, sent uh, by mail in real time to the user so you can connect to the application, analyze and take action. So as a result for this pilot uh, project, um, what we realized that we all 70% of the alerts that we shared with the customer were relevant alerts, um, which is a really, uh, it's a key KPI uh, for us because we, it's important that the, the user uh, does not waste time by uh, looking at uh, alerts and only um, spend time when there is an actual risk of an anomaly. Uh, so uh, a low false uh, positive rate is, uh, is very important. And based on this uh, successful uh, KPI, we decided to move to the next phase. Um, we developed the product and now it is available for in production uh, within our fraud detection uh, product. And it's uh, available for all our customer base. So I share with you these uh, two use cases uh, where machine learning uh, bring, uh, bring, bring you, can bring a value. Um, there are several uh, examples across each of the four pillars of Cariba. Um, you can see we have several of them related to treasury management, which is our core business. So here we focus more on automating all the manual action that uh, a user may need to do in the application. So automatically assigning budget code, automatically doing reconciliation, but we have a use cases in the other pillars like payments, risk management, working capital. And our goal is to continue to work with you to have uh, pilot uh, customer programs identify key use cases where machine, learn, machine learning technology is really meaningful and make it available to um, all our customer base. So thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to this presentation. And now if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.